there are several critical areas which, when damaged or destroyed by a bullet, are most likely to cause sudden or rapid incapacitation. The brain is, of course, the most critical organ, but the head is a relatively small target, and the cranial vault containing the brain is even smaller. In the torso, there are three critical areas, the heart, the upper spine, and the two large blood vessels, the aorta and the vena cava, which lie deep within the body from six to 12 or more inches, depending upon basic body size and thickness. The most common and sensible point of aim in combat shooting is the body's center of mass, which contains the heart, upper spine, and large vessels. The question now is, what actually does a bullet do to the human body? Now, the first and most basic effect of a bullet penetrating, entering a body, is that it crushes the tissue it contacts. It makes a hole. This is called the permanent cavity. It also causes some stretching of tissue called the temporary cavity. And within that fact lies an enormous amount of faulty data, invalid assumptions, and erroneous conclusions. You know, what we used to call BS. Now, bullets do stretch tissue. This brief thousandths of a second event called temporary cavitation is incorrectly regarded by many experts as the most important of all bullet effects upon the body. And while this is wrong, and it always has been wrong, you really can't put too much blame upon those who believe in it. Because the importance of temporary cavitation has been discovered and promoted by people whom you might assume should know what they're talking about. The United States government's Department of Justice, the Bureau of Standards, and the National Criminal Justice Council. In 1975, the Department of Justice working with the National Bureau of Standards, and these are the same guys who are now screwing up the uh, body armor standards, but that, that's another story. Anyway, these people, along with the uh, U.S. Army Ballistics Research Lab, decided to scientifically test handgun ammunition for effectiveness. It was, we might say, a noble effort, but it was fatally flawed right from the beginning. And the data produced in that study has done more to misinform people, particularly those in law enforcement, than any other source. Let's have a look at this study. The report rated virtually all available handgun ammunition by what the authors called a Relative Incapacitation Index, or RII. Now, what could have been a good idea and a valuable data resource was made invalid and misleading by the study's conviction that the maximum temporary cavity, or MTC, is the most important measure of bullet performance. Now, here we see in slow motion a block of gelatin about to be shot. Note what happens as the first bullet penetrates the gelatin. First, a large cavity appears, then it collapses. This is the temporary cavity. Now let's run the tape again, but this time we'll stop right at the point where the temporary cavity is at its largest volume. Now what the RII study did was to measure that cavity and then superimpose that cavity size onto a computer man model which has every square centimeter of a typical human body classified as to its overall importance in achieving incapacitation. Now this may all seem very scientific, and it is, but here's where they went wrong. They took the cavity measurement, let's say a temporary cavity of about 10 centimeters, and after superimposing it upon the computer man model, they made the assumption that all the tissue inside that cavity was now destroyed. This assumption is very wrong. Dr. Facker explains. A study done, uh, the so-called LEAA study done the, uh, the effectiveness, uh, a study done to determine effectiveness of handgun ammunition for uh, police use done by the Department of Justice or sponsored by the Department of Justice, started out with the theory that temporary cavitation measures the effectiveness of a handgun bullet in the body. And they don't even look at the permanent cavity. Now, the permanent cavity, the the amount of tissue that's crushed by the bullet as it passes through tissue, this is what makes holes in blood vessels and, and bowel and, and, and various parts of the body. The temporary cavity is nothing but a stretch. If, a, if the aorta is right next to a bullet that goes through and has a sizable temporary cavity, and the aorta therefore would be violently pushed aside, 
most unlikely that it'd be hurt by this violent pushing aside. Oh, there are instances but that it, it might be hurt by being stretched, but these are extremely rare. And the, the theory behind the, uh, the, the, the idea that temporary cavity uh, uh, does so much damage is, is based, on, based on an idea that is, that is uh, just not, not sound logically. In other words, the measuring the temporary cavity by a given pistol bullet. And we have, say, a 10 centimeter temporary cavity at a given depth of five or 10 centimeters. Okay, now, if we take a body and divide up the body into little squares and give each square a number, like in the computer man technology, and then we superimpose this, this temporary cavity on these, and every, anything, we count up the numbers that are inside the, are enclosed in the temporary cavity. Well, now there's a big, uh, there's a big uh, logical error right here. How can a cavity have anything in it? It doesn't. The cavity, when the cavity was there, all those little squares were pushed outside it, and they weren't in the cavity. So you can't encompass, you can't include things in a cavity. But I think the idea was that the, the material, the tissue included in the cavity, superimposed in the body, was destroyed by the cavity. Well, that was the idea, and I think you can see from the pictures I, I showed you here of the colon and the lung and the muscle that that certainly is not the case. The cavity uh, produced by the bullets that, that I, I've shown here uh, that produce uh, a damage of about that much, the cavity is that big. And certainly all that tissue around it is perfectly healthy. It's obvious. Dr. Fackler has performed numerous experiments which demonstrate the actual effect of temporary cavitation upon tissue an excellent example is the one in which he used the new AK-74 assault rifle bullet, which will create a, a larger temporary cavity than virtually any handgun bullet. Here we have uh, photographs of the autopsy of a pig who was shot while anesthetized by four shots with the AK-74 bullet. This is a non-deforming bullet, and here in the colon we see the slit-like wound made by the bullet and the bullet laid beside the wound and the slit-like wound is a little is about the same size maybe slightly larger than the bullet and in lung tissue we have similar uh, situation where the slice-like uh, tract of the bullet going sideways through lung is slightly larger than the cross section of the bullet the sideways cross section and a similar picture in muscle where the muscle tissue not being quite as elastic as lung it's a little, stretched a little bit. It remain, remains a little bit stretched, a little bit larger than the bullet. But here in liver, we see a marked difference. The, a massive area of about 10 centimeters of disruption, uh, or maybe 12 centimeters of disruption, caused by the temporary cavity, because certainly this area could not be hit by that bullet. And we have here marked disruption by a, a temporary cavity and it's just what we expect because the liver is a tissue that does not tolerate stretch very well. It's a not an elastic tissue as are the other tissues. So we feel the elasticity of the tissue is something that is extremely important in determining how much effect uh, the temporary cavitation will have on, on tissue. Yes, liver is an inelastic tissue, but as Dr. Fackler has pointed out, most human tissue is elastic and unlikely to be damaged by temporary cavitation caused by handgun bullets. In my opinion, the, the largest permanent cavity you can get, the more effective bullet you're going to have. Because the permanent cavity absolutely crushes and therefore destroys the tissue. Another serious and incomprehensible flaw in the Department of Justice study results from the fact that the authors believe that the deeper a bullet penetrates, the less effective it is. I know that sounds crazy, but look here. This chart shows the study's vulnerability index, a very important factor in their overall effectiveness rating of bullets. Notice how as penetration increases, vulnerability decreases. For example, if a bullet penetrates about five centimeters, which is about two inches, it is given a value of 0 0.06 on the vulnerability scale. But if that same bullet penetrates to about 21 centimeters or 8.4 inches, then its vulnerability goes down to less than 0 0.01, six times less effective. 
So according to this study, the less your bullet penetrates, the more likely it is to cause incapacitation.